Hello there, welcome back. Now, as I promised in those metal detecting videos I did in Mallorca a few weeks ago, I'm going to do a comparison between what was found with the mighty Garrett ATX, a beast of a pulse induction metal detector, versus what I found with the little Vibrotector 730. That also is a pulse induction metal detector, but obviously it's a hell of a lot smaller. Hell of a lot cheaper too. That, best part of two grand. That, about 150 pounds. And you can probably translate that straight into dollars for any US viewers. Now on my recent holiday, I spent approximately five hours hunting with each of these detectors. The Vibrotector was never used on the beach. It was always used underwater in amongst all the rocks and everything. But the ATX was used underwater as well as on the beach. Now you'd expect to find loads of stuff on the beach, especially with this fella. 11 inch coil versus a 4 inch coil. A rough, I don't know, 3 to 4 inch detection depth versus a detection depth that kind of defies logic. Quite often you will get sick of digging before you find your target. Now on the face of it, the ATX would seem to have everything necessary to literally blow this little lad out the water. But we're going to take a look at what was found in five hours detecting with each of these and see what you think. Okay, first of all, that is what was found with the ATX in five hours hunting on the beach and under the water in Mallorca. 43 coins in total, some of which were spendable. There wasn't a huge amount of really crusty ones, but that's not bad. But compare it to that, that's what the Vibrotector 730 found in five hours hunting under the water where the finds were more difficult to locate and more difficult to retrieve. 57 coins in total plus a couple of lead weights and a bullet. And one of those coins actually looks like either an early milled silver or a hammered silver. Very thin and there's a slight bust on one of the sides but it's, it's too worn to make out what it is. Quite a lot of those coins are pre-euro currency. I think these really encrusted ones are euros because they have a lot of iron in them and they just go like a total mess. And most of the ones found on the beach were euro currency, so they were younger. There you go, that's a side-by-side. -side. Garrett ATX on the left, Vibrotector 730 on the right. Now I would never have thought that this little Vibrotector 730 would find more than the Garrett ATX. Especially considering that I hunted the beach very hard with this and the finds were really easy to retrieve on the beach because you're pretty much just digging in sand. When I was using this, I was having to hack my way through stone and really pull out crusty lumps and move boulders and everything to get to the coins. This did really, really well. But why did it do so well? Well, I have a theory on that and that is that the beach gets pounded by other people with metal detectors. A lot of the things that I found with the ATX were kind of 10 to 12 inches deep, which is out of the range of most of your cheap crappy metal detectors, which a lot of people would bring on holiday. Now those cheap detectors probably wouldn't be any good under the water. And that's where this little fella excels because it can get into all the little nooks and crannies where people would either never think of detecting or be unable to detect because of the limitations of their metal detector. So if I was going to give you any advice based on those findings, it would be whilst it's great to cover both bases, i.e. really deep beach hunting and nook and cranny hunting underwater, if you only had to take one and you were concerned about space in your case, go for the vibe detector. This is a real holiday detector. Just check the local laws though because Quite a few of the Mediterranean countries, especially the ones towards central and eastern parts, will not allow metal detecting, even if you're just using something like this, so don't get yourself in trouble. Check the local laws. I actually got caught out a couple of years ago because I couldn't find anything out about Portugal. So I took the ATX and I went beach metal detecting there, luckily very, very early in the morning. Upon my return and posting the video about it, I found out it was actually illegal to go detecting there. So that's the one time that I've been illegally detecting. Unknowingly, but it could have cost me a big fine and my detector. Check the local laws. 
Now I would recommend both of these detectors. They both do very, very well for me. This one is very expensive, but it does punch exceptionally deep. It's not phased by mineralized sand, rocks, anything like that. And it packs up very, very small as well. It's got a bit of weight to it, but if you're using it underwater, it is a joy to use. And a couple of years ago, I found a huge gold ring with this. The Vibrotector would never have touched it because it was approximately 14 inches under the hard sand, under about two feet of seawater. If you want to check out some proper metal detecting videos, please visit the metal detecting playlist on my channel. There's oh, a lot of videos there and I made some cracking finds over the years with all sorts of detectors. I'll put the link to that in the video description and also in the pinned comment, but you'll also find it just by clicking my icon to go to my channel, scrolling down, and you'll see all the different playlists there. There's all sorts on the channel, including the metal detecting playlist. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.